What's up, the Generic Gamblers Mad Morrigan here. Punches Town Day 3. Let's just give it a quick review and then we'll move on with our selections to day 4. So in the very first race, Jiven Jury, that man, the classy Cottle Landers, landing a bit of a touch here and giving an absolute peach of a ride. So really, really good stuff there. And uh, yeah, really, really well done. You cannot keep a good man down. So Cottle Landers giving this horse one of the best rides of the festival. Really, really good. And uh, yeah, great to see it. Right, let's move on to 4.15. Young Simon Thorns, no strangers to winners here this week. Getting it done on the Anthony Honeyball trained Sully Dock. So really, really good performance as well. And nice to see Anthony travelling over and showing that the, the Brits can get a small little bit of revenge after the... The, the, the massacre that went on in Cheltenham. Right, next up was Singing Banjo. Really, really good. Philip Rotwell team, absolutely take a bow. Two wins there in a week to win the Latouche as well at a massive price. So really, really good stuff. And then in the 525 Champion Stairs Hurdle, Classical Dream, absolutely mouthwatering. Never came off the bridle. Great to see him bouncing back. But could you ever doubt that man, Willie Mullins, just time and time again can get these horses to perform at the big festivals, 10 or 12 pound above anything they've ever done. Our selection in that race, Ronald Pump, look out for him. I hear he might be going to France for the French champion hurdle. What a run that was after all the time he had off. So really, really best of luck to Ronald Pump heading to France. Right. The next race then, we had a runaway winner, which Jody McGarvey for JP McManus and Willie Mullins, Capodano, or however you pronounce it, Capodano, really, really just impressive and an absolute runaway. So the end of the day was just a Willie Mullins massacre. Literally takes the last five races in a row. So mouthwater and stuff and then Energamine let's not forget him yes he was short odds on but a very very exciting horse in training then we move on to Willie again and Paul Townen getting the double up straight away with I'm not even going to pronounce it anyway but the 7 to 4 favourite getting it done and then moving on to Dysard Dynamo I think it is Patrick Mullins again a really really good winner 7 lengths and uh, yeah, well done. So Willie Mullins, demolition job on day three. Okay, let's move on to my selections for day four. And uh, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna go through them here swiftly. Some nice prices we got in the 4.15 tomorrow, Port Stanley, he's around 12 to one. Look, he's probably not the most natural tracer in the world. This is a tough handicap but I think he could have some upside. He sneaks in off 10 stone six, Robbie Power in the saddle, Jessica Harrington horses have been running a few pound above the norm all week, so really, really, her horses have just really came into a bit of form. I'm willing to say he can be well enough handicapped to definitely be there or thereabouts at around 12 to one. Uh, let's move on then to the 450, the really likable, tough court maid by Court Cave. This is a really, really genuine mare. Always gives her all. Has won over a variety of different trips. And I really think now it's perfect timing for Jack Foley. Young Jack Foley to get back in the plate and get a very valuable seven off this mare because she really, really has been so consistent. I give her a chance tomorrow. She's definitely going to improve again with the seven pound off. She just runs her best. And I think the seven pound is definitely enough to put her back bang there again so really really looking forward so best of luck to young jack foley a talented young horseman making his name in the racing world had a good couple of winners this year so a jockey to follow moving forward okay in the 525 let's just pull up this mouth-watering paddy scour champion hurdle what a race it is absolutely unbelievable i'm only messing the paddy power champion hurdle right let's just go through it honeysuckle what a mare she is what was cheltenham mind blowing epitont another good run in cheltenham sharja just finds the brilliant fillies too good in cheltenham so but always in his own right a very very good horse abracadabra's brilliant in the entry hurdle back to two mile again asked by her tower and let's not forget the crazy goshen Goshen is definitely an interesting runner tomorrow. Jason the Militant, Darver Star. Okay, 
let's all be in agree honeysuckle we love her she's amazing she's brilliant and look all going well she probably will win but i have a selection here tomorrow i just think we might have a bit of rain uh, it might just be on the slow side of good little interesting one about goshen i'm going to tip up goshen for a place bet hopefully you get around five to two or or uh you know at least nine to four five to two hopefully just to back him for a place little couple of facts about goshen he's definitely 100 percent a better horse right-handed he's never been beaten right-handed over hurdles he's always put in his best performances going right-handed with a little bit of juice in the ground yes he does some fucked up crazy shit going left-handed but you know what he is freakish and he is very good and I'm going to forgive him all the crazy shit he does. He's on Punchestown on a track that might suit and if we do get enough of rain overnight I can see him being placed and I could see him maybe chasing home a honeysuckle or, or um, if not troubling her. But I just think he's the one that may be on the track. Yes, I have to forgive him for what he did in Cheltenham, but sure, hey, I was a crazy cake myself for a while. I did some <laughs> some stuff, but hey, I turned it around, so I'm still here. Goshen, Jamie Moore in the saddle, looking for redemption, so it's a place selection. Shop around and just back him for a place. Look, if you're brave enough, if you get, if you got three to one for a place, which you probably won't, but he's 12 to one, so they might give you a five to two for a straight place bet. I, I'd take a chance. I, I just think he's the one horse getting... Look, we have to forgive him some stupid shit. But he's the one horse that definitely getting everything in his favour tomorrow. I'm prepared to give him one last chance. And I think he's a good place bet at around 5-2 to two if he could be got at it. And uh, if, he could, if you could find 3-1, to one, I would say he's a great place bet. Because everything right-handed, little bit of juice in the ground... He'll run much better than he did at Cheltenham. Mark my words on that. Okay. So, Honeysuckle, Epiton, Sharjah. Let's just go through. Abracadabra is a horse I love. But I like him for real good ground. I just think the ground might be a little dead tomorrow. But look, I'm not going to mess around. My place, uh, I'm not going to go around the bush. My place sec is selection, Goshen. Hopefully you'll get around 5-2 to two for a place minimum. Definitely, if you get anything like 3-1 to one for a place get on it i'm telling you it's, it's it's a good bet at three to one right let's look at the 635 at punchestown so david maxwell over for paul nichols bob and co got a nice little confidence booster around hexham i think it was the last day an easy winner he is definitely my selection in the champion hunters chase i know david maxwell yes he does have some trills and spills he's a lovely a gentleman and i wish you the very best of luck tomorrow david and i hope you can get it done right moving on from that then in the 705 at punchestown this is a very very interesting runner for me it's a son of master craftsman mc muldoon Definitely has a nice line of form. Second to Echoes of Rain. We all know how good she is now. And uh, Mr. Mul or MC Muldoon could definitely be improving. Really, really nice type. It's Willie Mullins. They're on fire. Patrick Mullins in the saddle. So the 705 tomorrow, I give that a big shout. One horse to look out for. I'll just jump her in there real quick. Is a sprinter I've been always watching. She runs tomorrow. Sarah's first. In the four o'clock at Chep, so I'm worried the ground might be a little soft. Yes, there is a couple of good winners in the race, but I always marked her up as a horse to follow in sprints. I left her alone the last day in Windsor because she was drawn the widest of all, and she still ran with a lot of credit. She was pushed up the wide outside the whole way. Not a lot she could do, just victim to circumstance where she was drawn. I think tomorrow the race would go much smoother to her. And it will definitely bring her a lot closer to the Mark Rymel one that beat her the last day. So Sarah's verse in the four o'clock tomorrow. If she handles the, the ground, she is a crack in each way bet at around six to one. She's definitely a sprinter we haven't seen the best of. She's off a mark of 58 tomorrow. I'm def I'm sure she can win off a mark of 58. I'm not sure she can go on the ground. But let's hope tomorrow she'll run a big, big race. Crack in each way bet. Okay, I'm Mad Murrigan. Remember, look out for Money Man's selections in the descriptions of the video he will put them in our festival tipster right the time for cotton is over i hope you've been enjoying punchestown festival what a meeting and uh, yeah great willie mullins total domination peace i'm out